What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, yeah, this episode is a day late because iMovie was being a bitch yesterday, but let's not talk about that. This is a very special episode of the podcast because uh, your mate Tom is becoming our mate Tom. <laughs> we're talking about psychedelics. Uh, we're talking about lots of things to do with spirituality, breakthroughs, awakening, that kind of stuff. Uh, you need to check out Tom's channel if you're into this kind of talk because he makes really interesting and, and educational content about psychedelics that we need to know before we use these substances so check him out all the links are in the description and we'll see you all next week peace um, all right so basically like i asked you to to do this because um a few years ago i found out about ayahuasca right um i never did it but you know i was really tempted like really tempted and I think there's a lot of people who find out about it and they watch documentaries like the one that you made, which is fucking brilliant, by the way. Um, oh, seriously, I really enjoyed it. I watched it with, I watched it with my mom earlier today. <laughs> and she, the first thing she said is like, why is that boy smoking a cigarette? I was like, listen, man, they're talking about some real shit here. Like, just calm down. Um, <laughs> it's that, a mapache. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so it's different. Um, the, the, yeah. the thing is like, when, when we find out about things like ayahuasca, it can cause us to look at it like, oh, this is going to solve what's going on in here. And right. I, this is why I appreciate the work that you, um, Adam and Koi and all of these other guys are doing because you've given like the reality check. Like it's not all fun and games. There's no unicorns jumping over rainbows and shit like that. Can you like, I don't know if you can condense it into, into like something kind of short, but like, can you briefly describe like the way you found out about this and like why you decided to take it? So, okay. I'll try to give a condensed version. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I found out about ayahuasca and, and DMT and all that kind of stuff, listening to the Joe Rogan experience, especially guests like uh, Graham Hancock, Aubrey Marcus, and these guys and the way they explained it just ticked so many boxes for me. And I'm like, wow, I can like really relate with this. And at that time I was just going through a lot of depress depressive and anxiety kind of issues and addictive tendencies and all that kind of stuff. And I was in a really dark place and I've tried so many things. And then I don't know, just hearing about ayahuasca, I just felt it in my call, like that call, like I, I need to do this. Like, I feel like this could really help me. And so I bit the bullet. I went to Chile to visit family and, you know, Peru's right next to there. So I was like, I might as well take advantage. And yeah, so I flew to the jungle by myself um, to drink this sacred psychedelic brew. And like, once I got there, like I remember I was in the Maloka and it was really dark in the Amazon and the shamans like giving me this weird looking brew. And I'm like, oh, <sighs> oh shit. All right. No turning back now. <laughs> Shit. And I just went for it. Yeah, it was, fun. it was terrifying. Like, it was the most scariest thing I've ever gone through. Especially, like, the months, even weeks leading up to it because all my shadow issues were, like, really rising up to the surface. The ego is kicking in. Give me all these excuses why I shouldn't do it. Mm. But, and of course, my whole family is, like, really against <laughs> it. Because, like, now, even three years ago, ayahuasca wasn't nowhere near as popular as it is today mm. so it's it wasn't as accepted and people didn't know much about it mm. um but yeah i did it obviously it transformed my life obviously with integration and stuff like that but yeah and then i just decided to create a youtube channel <laughs> that was my first video my really? ayahuasca experience because i was so mind blown mm. not even mind blown by the experience itself but so mind blown that so many people have experienced this substance and hardly anyone talks about it. So I was like, what the fuck? Why is everyone putting this mask on and pretending like they, they don't do this because they're afraid of what their peers think and what their family thinks. So it was kind of like a, I wanted to take the mask off myself so I can give permission to others to kind of do the same. So yeah, it was a lot of like, I wanted to reduce the stigma, but also like, fucking, like it was out of a, a lot of frustration actually. Mm. And no one was talking about it. So that was my main intention. And of course, to help people because it helped me so much with so many of these issues, like depression and stuff. So I think that's really important, man. You know, the, the taking the stigma out of it. Like me, even like with the work that I do, like with spiritual mentorship, you can, if I say to someone like, 
oh yeah, I've done psychedelics in the past. I see certain switch go off me like, hmm, don't know if, I, if I'm down with that. And th- that is slowly but surely coming away, especially with people like Rick Doblin doing the work with maps and um, yeah. people like Jordan Peterson talking about how we should treat it with reverence and stuff like that. I also watched your video on cannabis, right? Now, I, I was smoking weed like I was using it as a drug to mm. distract and um, to, you know, like if, when you externalize the thing that's going on in here or here, you're like looking for something to distract you. And it, for me, it was video games, alcohol, drug, um, weed, sex, whatever. Yeah, and, yeah. Yes. And, and I think a lot of us, partic- I'm not sure about women, but like particularly a lot of young men that I spent time with, they have done this as well. Like, yeah. do you think it's something in our society that's encouraging us to seek it? Well, there's uh, so many factors, man. But one mm-hmm. that comes to mind is like, we live in a society where we get told this bullshit that it's like, if you're not feeling anything but happiness or positive emotions, something must be wrong. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like, you have a headache, take a pain pill for it. Oh, you feel bored. Have some Netflix. Oh, you feel sad. Have some antidepressants. Oh, you feel this, have that. Like, it's like, I don't know people don't feel okay with like feeling sad or angry with, and these are all useful human human emotions it's only when you hold on to them that they become toxic like for example anger if you hold on to that it becomes resentment if you hold on to sadness that can turn into depression and that's when it's not useful but yeah there's a whole bunch of things of why we feel addicted to these things but and we live in the information age and there's so many stimulation going on and it's like we feel uncomfortable sitting with ourselves and i think that fundamentally that could be a big reason is that we just don't want to sit with ourselves because it's scary, right? Like yeah. actually really facing yourself in every sense of the word is like the scariest thing I've ever done in my life. So yeah, no wonder. <laughs> <laughs> I think so too. And you know, like the act of actually sitting with yourself and not, and you know, like when you're playing video games, right, you've got something to focus on externally. And it's so funny, like, plants like cannabis is supposed to be used for like ritual or medicinal purposes allows you to look within and some people use it for meditation and stuff i felt like you know when there's a certain point yeah it can be useful but if you're like all the time like like smoking every day right exactly like it's it's a clear sign that there's something that's going unaddressed and this this thing about um there's like i'm there's a there's both arguments you know i think it should be legal i think it's you know there's a reason why it's not and yeah. coming from a place of looking at the whole world looking considering everyone i think there's a it's probably for the best that psychedelics have been illegal not in the sense that it, the black market stuff can be made and it's fucked with i mean like i definitely think there's certain people who aren't ready for it and if it was legal they might be encouraged to take it and yeah. that, that's, that's kind of where, where my um, conflict around psychedelics is coming from because I'm definitely going to be speaking more about my own use and how it's helped me and stuff. But mm. the, I always having, like, you guys do, like, disclaimer, like, I'm not promoting it, I'm not telling you to do it. And it's, like, a fine line to tread. Like, how, how do you find, obviously, your channel is coming under fire and stuff from YouTube, and, you know, we, we can talk about that as well. Yeah. How do you feel like being in this space, in this kind of area of YouTube and trying to do this kind of work? Well, yeah, it's difficult because psychedelics, like when I first started my channel, like my approach has changed a lot. Um, but I, when I first started, I, I had this like psychedelic warrior mentality. Where, like everyone should have psychedelics, like not everyone, but pretty much everyone. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? But you, you can't go to your grave with it without having at least one psychedelic experience, this and that. And I don't believe that anymore because there are many ways to reach that point without any substance. And like you said, it's not for everybody. And I don't agree that it should be comp- like, you know, it's sold at every Seven Eleven in the country. Like, cause most people aren't, most people aren't ready for it. Mm. You know what I mean? Even like, for many parts, I don't know, like even I wasn't ready for it in many, many aspects. And there are people that are a lot worse off than what I was. So it's like, I don't know. Cause these are like, 
because psychedelics aren't good or bad. They amplify your state of consciousness at the moment. And most people's state of consciousness is very, let's say, neurotic and a lot of, uh, yeah, there's just a lot of, because I think what, when you have a bad trip, for example, it's like when you're forced to look at your shadow, yeah. you know, which is part of yourself that we just sweep under the rug, parts of ourselves that we don't accept. And then when it can't, sometimes it's too overwhelming, it's too much. And then that can fracture your ego and it can do more damage than good if you're not prepared for it and if you don't integrate it. Mm. So yeah, I'm very careful with how I approach these things, especially these days, especially with the experiences that I've had. Uh, Cause I had some pretty terrifying trip, you know, one, my last one, which uh, catalyzed this very intense existential crisis. And I went down this really dark hole and I've made videos on it. So like, I'm not going to go too much into it here, but it was, I saw the real potential darkness that these substances can take you and it's fucking terrifying. It's, mm. And I think that there are a lot of people who go to this place and don't get out of it. You know what I mean? Like I was, yeah. I'm blessed and lucky that I got out of it. I integrated, I, my environment was set up in this space that I could get better and heal and now i'm grateful for it and i'm and i'm all good for the most part but uh yeah that can be really dangerous so i kind of saw the real darkness of it and i'm not just talking about because some people will say like you know you have a bad trip and they're usually the most beneficial ones and like i agree to a certain extent but there is a certain level of darkness and malevolence i would say that you can reach with these drugs that is not like oh yeah no nah, this is just helping you learn something uncomfortably about yourself and then you just integrate and you'll be okay. It's like, no, there are parts <laughs> of it that can be seriously terrifying and it's not good. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to go there. Um, so yeah, I'm very careful in terms of how I approach these things with not only disclaimers, but I try to be really balanced with how I talk about this topic, uh, not just the positives, but also the negatives. Mm. And um, yeah, I guess my approach is really just to be as balanced as I possibly can it's yeah. it's a it's a beautiful thing to approach it with balance right like so we're we're not encouraging but also at the same time it's like if you're going to do it at least consider doing it with some sort of intention in mind set and setting stuff like that here's here's where i'm at with my own psychedelics journey i think like to do it a couple of times a year with a specific intention and stuff might be okay but my last experience i had kind of troubled me like um, it was the second time I've taken LSD and like it scared me not because of what I was shown or anything like that it's because of I, you know, you've seen the movie Limitless right yeah yeah you know when the guy is typing his book <laughs> I, uh, bas <laughs> I basically <laughs> had that experience I just typed like insane amount and I got insane yeah. amount of work done and I couldn't believe it and I, I got kind of worried because I was like that's not normal and uh, yeah obviously that's a bad word to use but like as in it just it kind of made me check myself like why is it so easy for me to do this when i've had this influence and surely i should be able to get there without it and this is when i started really thinking about is it practical to have like to go on to have these things in our journey throughout life as a as some kind of supplement or should well, I'm, this is just an opinion question for you really is like, do you think that yeah. it's okay, you take it, you learn from it and then maybe you just, there's, there's a point where you don't need to do it. Right. Yeah. With that, of course, everyone's unique and different and there's always exceptions to the rule. If there is a rule and all that, um, for me, where I've, the stage that I'm at and the way I see it, is like, I don't know, because psychedelics are so extreme and they're very dramatic experiences, <laughs> right? And I'm at the stage now where I'm looking at the, you know, Buddhism will call it the middle path, right? And a lot of these mystics will talk about enlightenment and it's like the place you want to get to is like absolute stillness and really look at the subtleties of life and see the divinity in this physical reality because sometimes we can use psychedelics as like, oh, we think, we're growing and all this kind of stuff, but and sometimes it can just be spiritual masturbation in a lot mm. of ways. 
where it's like, oh, I'm facing my demons. Yeah, I'm doing this. I'm doing work on myself. But really, it's like spiritual bypass. You're spiritual bypassing. Yeah. And it's like, you're actually not doing the work. You're using that as a distraction because the ego is very tricky and can use spiritual practices to strengthen itself if you're not careful. So this is the realization that I've had for myself and my own personal use with psychedelics because they've helped me tremendously, don't get me wrong, but I'm like, I think I'm at that stage now where I don't really need them anymore, at least for a very, very long time and just integrate the lessons that I have gotten from them. But like I said, it's about, uh, in my opinion, I think it's more about looking at the subtleties of life, doing the simple things. Like, you know, you mentioned Jordan Peterson, clean your room, go for a walk. <laughs> help your mom do the dishes like real real simple shit like that that we yep. ignore but it's like no we want to do the pashna and wim hof breathing and psychedelics <laughs> and all these extreme spiritual practices and they're fine they're helpful but i think yeah like buddhism says the middle path or the eightfold path they talk mm. about and you don't want to go because one extreme is trying to reach happiness through sensory pleasures you know drugs sex food etc well, I guess what I'm assuming what you've done and what I've done in our youth. And then the other extreme is like abstinence with these extreme spiritual practices, like fasting and going to monasteries and all that kind of stuff. So I think there's a middle way yeah, yeah. where you can like be a part of this society, but not too attached in a sense. So that's where I'm at anyway. So just really just, yeah, taking it simple. I'm good. Yeah, I, love so I was like using psychedelics, I think to travel these, spiritual realms and all that kind of stuff and i thought that was a divine but i was actually not realizing that no this physical reality earth right here where we are this is the divine reality and there's a reason why we're here this is what i believe anyway and it's just what it's what's helped me yeah yeah i love so. that man that, that middle path um it definitely like resonates with me because i think like coming a lot of young people are definitely so by the sounds of it uh, watching your videos and stuff it's definitely, um, and uh, we've experienced similar stuff, like, you know, being on the extreme hedonistic treadmill, as it's referred to, and just yes. keep seeing, keep seeping, keep seeing. Like and that. then onto the yeah. other side of, like, fuck all of that shit, let me sort myself out. And I think it's great that we've got teachers like Jordan B. Peterson and podcasts like Joe Rogan that we can listen to to start doing that work. Something mm. fucks me up every time I feel like I've grown is the ego, right? Like... I think yeah. a lot of us, like, especially Aubrey talks about this as well. He goes like, um, someone asked him like, what are you facing at the moment? He just says, it's always ego. Because when we use spiritual practice, like you said, it can strengthen itself. And what, what I would like to know is like, what signs have you seen of that in your own journey? Like of the ego strengthening itself through these practices? Well, I'll say in the start of my journey, I remember after having ayahuasca, and I'll look at people who haven't had a psychedelic experience. Like, ah, oh, you don't actually know what it's like. Like I had like this spiritual superiority. It was like unconscious, but it, it was very obvious in the way I thought about things. I'm like, you don't know what, it, you don't, actually don't know what you're talking about. Cause you haven't had a, you know, you haven't had a psychedelic experience. It's like, what the, yeah. When I think about it now, I'm like, Oh, what a douchebag. But anyway, just things like that or hmm. like judging other people or thinking that I'm like, no, I'm good. Or, I don't need to do this. Or like, for example, uh, I don't know. I, again, cause I'll, my whole life I've been a very extreme person. Always like to push the boundaries with everything. Like, you know, go hard or go home. Kind of, that was my motto. Even with spirituality. So yep. I would be doing again, like, you know, like Wim Hof breathing, psychedelics, uh, traveling, doing retreats, all this kind of stuff. But then I wouldn't do simple things like cleaning my room. My room was a mess. You know, <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what that's like. You know, or like letting go of friends that are holding me back, or you know, changing my environment, or moving out, and just yeah, this, th those are the kind of signs that I look back on, where it's like, yes, I'm studying all these, I'm reading all these books and philosophy, and I have this YouTube channel and all this, but then I didn't have these simple things in order in my life, which is actually affecting me the most because that's like the foundation. So mm. yeah, that's one example of how. I fell into that trap. I definitely, I definitely agree, man. You know, like I, um, I was abstinent from sex and relationships and alcohol for like, well, still I'm from alcohol, but like I did the abstinence from relationships for like nearly three years. And in that wow. time, 
I started, <laughs> I started looking down at people like, oh, you're wasting your time chasing one night stands. Yeah, fuck you. And it was like, <laughs> where, 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 who the fuck gave me the, 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 the right to do that? And, and if I claim to be spiritual or if I'm on the path of like working on myself, yeah. surely like I'm, the way I've seen it now is like I need to reduce that separation between me and that person who's doing that. And this is yeah. where I think, you know, I had a mushroom experience and it made me feel that oneness and I'd never felt that before. Like I was always very judgmental and very like, you know, when I was younger, I just used to judge the fuck out of everyone. And I used to hate people who were religious and all of this stuff. And I realized there's so many layers to working on yourself. And it's become like this, um, especially with the self-help community, people who are making certain videos on YouTube, there's a lot of this like, I think you you said it the best spiritual bypassing it's like you want to go for those high heights like trying to open your third eye and stuff like that when the basics is like what, what's your breathing like are you going <laughs> or throughout the day or are you like chill? yeah and and that's where i started like you know the first video i watched in spirituality was ralph smart infinite waters guy talking about opening yeah. the third eye and i was like oh cool i'll just do that and i started to experience some effects but it strengthened the shit out of my ego because then i started looking at everyone else oh you're not even doing this type of meditation to open your third eye and it's really weird mm. it's really weird how something that's got such a great intention fucks you up if you're not ready to do it in in that in, if you're not ready in that capacity yeah. of your mind exactly like you said like you you know what's the saying guys the road to hell is paved with good intentions <laughs> but it's like intention in and of itself isn't it isn't enough <laughs> mm. yeah that's definitely uh, true it's about the cause of the action yeah but yeah it's so easy to grow this spiritual ego with things that seem so innocent at the start and something like opening your third eye i feel just like psychedelics can actually be dangerous if you haven't built the basic foundation of your mind, your emotions and, and yeah, and all that kind of stuff and your body. So, you know, th this is something yeah. that I find really interesting is like these, these substances, they can help you build new neurological pathways, like new neural networks and stuff. And that sounds like something really amazing. Right. But where I saw it going kind of pear shaped for me was like, how do I know I'm using it with the right intention as such as like, how do I know that the neural pathways that are being formed now are actually going to serve me and are not actually going to cause me to seek out doing it again, doing it again. Oh, okay. I need to build this kind of um, way of thinking. Let me use this. And that, this is again, like, I don't think yeah. things are inherently bad. They're definitely tools to be used, but what, I don't really know yeah. how to phrase it, but like what kind of person do you think can use this thing in balance or what kind of ideal do we need to, not even need to, what kind of like mindset should we adopt when, when trying to use it for that growth? Well, I think with, let's say with psychedelics, cause there are a few ways to use it. One people use it for healing, mm -hmm. right? So people who are suffering from severe mental disorders like PTSD, clinical depression, severe anxiety, things like that. And I think in this context, if you are going through like this incredibly difficult ordeal and you've tried everything, you've tried the therapy, you've tried traditional healing modalities, you've tried it all and nothing works and you feel the strong call to do whatever it is, whether it's ayahuasca or whatever, and you find a good retreat, a reputable retreat, then, then yeah, of course, go for it. That can really help because psychedelics are really good at kind of cutting through that scar tissue that you may have built and just go straight to the core and show you what the fuck you need to do with your life. And then you integrate after that. I think in that context, then yeah, of course, that can be very helpful. And then another way of using psychedelics is more for like spiritual development, whatever you want, to, whatever that means. <laughs> uh, and in that case, I think just from what I've learned from my own experience and the many, many people I've met, it's like, like we talked about before, do the basics first. You know what I mean? Like if you can't even have the discipline of eating healthy, then I don't think you should be fucking with psychedelics <laughs> in many ways. Like unless, oh, but then again, I know you might have a shit diet and then you have a psychedelic experience and then that, uh, 
motivates you to eat healthy, then yeah, okay, cool. That can be all right. But it's more, my criticism is more the people who return, constantly return to the psychedelic experience, but they're not really changing over the long term. Mm. And then they can actually do more damage because then it grows spiritual ego more. And then you're using it out of escapism. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because like a big trap and a big spiritual ego thing is to say like, oh, this is all an illusion. This reality, it's meaningless. <laughs> you know, I'm God, this and that. And it's like, no, this is definitely fucking real. It's just, there's a lot of pain and suffering associated with this reality, which is hard to face. So it's easy to say like, oh, it's not real. It's an illusion. That's bullshit. That's spiritual ego. Of course, this is real, you know? Mm. And then the same thing of like, yeah, but I'm, you know, I'm God. It's like, no, you're a part of God. You're a fragment of God. You can have the experience of being in unity with God, but you're not God. You're still a human. You know what I mean? You're still attached to this human body. And no matter what you do, you have an ego, right? So it's like, it's just things like that. Like, try, this is all stuff that I've fallen into, and it's so dangerous in many ways. It's very like new agey, kind of like, oh, life is all sunshine and lollipops. And life is incredibly, it's beautiful, it's profound, of course. And you can tap into that all the time. You can tap into source. And there's ways that you can transcend duality and always be connected to presence and all that kind of stuff. But there is a very ugly side to reality as well and there's a lot of malevolence and you have to like acknowledge that instead of just chucking it aside like, oh it's all it's all it's all an illusion man you know it's easy to say that yeah it's easy to say that i used to say that all the time yeah but i don't even know where we're going but uh yeah and I, I would <laughs> definitely agree with you man i've been in that position where you know you take you you say like oh yeah well you know i'm lifting the veil i'm i'm looking through the illusion i'm perceiving the mile whatever you want to call it and it's like you know i i said to someone once um how can i take anything fucking seriously anymore when i've seen that everything we're doing is just a bunch of bs and he said to me look man it's up to you. You can be one of those people who says, oh, that's fucked up. And I'm going over here. I'm going to sit in the mountains and I ain't talking to no one. So fuck all of you. Or you can say, all right, cool. That, that shit is defunct. I don't want to have anything to do with it. So I'm going to build something better. And I think this is why I admire the, your guys' work so much is because you saw something that was going on. You didn't agree with it and you wanted to talk about it. And I think that that's something amazing that can come not just from psychedelic use, but, you know, people who uh, I say your suffering is your strength, right? Like whatever BS you've gone through is what you can help others transcend as well. So like many people who might have mm. used these substances irresponsibly after watching yours channel, Adam's channel, whoever's, they might look at it and be like, oh, do you know what? That's, that's probably not the way to go. They're, what they're saying is makes sense. And I think that's how we bridge the gap between the fucked up bullshit that we're experiencing now to a better world. And I don't think it's going to be some kind of utopia that, oh, suddenly oh, everything's fine. It's like a continual daily thing. Maybe like, you know, they, I, oh, use yeah. this, I use this analogy, right? You know, when you do the pepper thing and like bits fall out, I can't remember what the thing's called, but you know what I'm saying, right? Like you sprinkle pepper on something and the dots fall all over your food. Yeah. And I feel like the people who are creating the change are those little dots of pepper and the rest of the food. Like if it's not going to fall in one place because the whole food needs flavor. And then when you mix it all together, it starts to change the whole flavor of the dish. And this is a really yeah. stupid analogy and it does, <laughs> it's hard to explain sometimes. No, no, I, I, yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, well, it's like the little things that you do every day. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I feel so like that's this what is what makes the biggest impact. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And this is why I feel like so speaking on the topic of like changing stuff, right? What would you like to see in this in a world that looks better than today? And I think education system is like the given one, right? Yeah. Uh well there's a lot of things I'd like to change. I hope that I think that, for example, empathy is something that most people lack so much. I think that's a big, that's important for me. Uh, having empathy for our brothers and sisters who are going through a lot of pain and suffering, you know, mm -hmm. um, that could be one. And also 
integrating more of these ancient practices that we've kind of forgotten about, you know, like with the meditation, uh, kind of retreats, spending more time in nature, just simple things. It doesn't even have to be psychedelic necessarily, even though that would be great that we, you know, that psychedelics could be integrated within our society, but in a way where it's like, you go into a retreat, then you get assessed and you have all these facilitators and practitioners who know what they're doing. Like that would be more ideal versus you just going into a doctor's office and they give you LSD or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so it's more to it than that. Mm. Um, yeah, we'll just start, um, go with there. Uh, more just empathy. Yeah. Yeah, like for people to have more empathy. I think that's a that's a huge thing that could change like so many people's lives, and it's funny because you know when you see the the way the world is now, like everyone's got a voice on social media and stuff, and it's like the whole world is in one room. And when you're walking around this room, looking at the conversations people are having or the bullshit that's going on, I find myself looking around like this is really what's going on. You really concerned about stupid bullshit about like stuff that doesn't even matter and it's it, i feel like yeah. you know okay some of us call it illuminati or whatever whatever this the, the the agenda is i feel like these distractions are put in place to stop us from looking at ourselves and i'll give you the controversial example first it's like this yeah. um you know people paying so much attention to the body right i feel like the body this is like the biggest fucking illusion ever because you, we all know, right, like the people who are doing the inner work, we know we're not this. This this is just what we came to express ourselves in, right? But when it comes mm. to like someone saying, oh, I want to get surgery work to change my gender, like I look at that, I'm like, listen, yeah, that's okay, you got some stuff going on, but you're paying into the illusion. And they are really fucking happy about that because the more you externalize whatever's going on in here and you pay into that, the less time you're going to spend looking in here and the less impact you're going to have on cha on basically taking your attention away from what they want for us. And this is a really controversial thing. I don't really give a fuck what anyone else has to say about it. This is just my genuine, honest approach yeah. and view. And I feel like it's up to people who have this awareness to speak out on it. And a lot of us are getting shut down. A lot of people's opinions are getting shut down. Obviously, the things that are happening with your guys' YouTube channels, it's not right. But do you think that to cause this shift, to encourage people to look within, it is about just expressing our truth and seeing if it resonates? Yes. And I think also about, it's about self-love and accepting yourself. Mm. It sounds so hippie, but it's so true, man. Mm. People just hate themselves. <laughs> I did for the longest time. Yeah, same, same. I still have old programs and still hate myself. I'm sure unconsciously. It's a fucking pro it's a process. Mm. Uninstalling all these bullshit programming. But yeah, it's true. Like people just feel uncomfortable in their own skin. And it's sad. It's because society tells you, oh, this is what it's this is what it means to be a, a real man or a beautiful woman or this or that. This is what it means to be successful it's crazy mm. it's like and then if you have something like a software bug which we call mental illness then there's something <laughs> wrong with you it's like what the fuck i love that you know like if you have schizophrenia you're crazy whereas in other cultures in in the amazon for example the schizophrenics turned into shamans and they use that power to help their tribe you know mm. so there's a gift in everything um mm. it's just when we judge it and then we separate ourselves from everybody else and we think something must be wrong with me mm. because that person looks happy, but then that's all a facade too because everyone puts their mask on. So it's like <laughs> most people aren't happy. Yeah. It's yeah. a funny game that we've got ourselves in, but yeah. it can be fun. If you learn the rules, you love yourself, you work on your awareness. It can be awesome. You can use mm. this whole system to your advantage and I'm not in like an egotistical way. I mean like in a beautiful way where you fill up your own cup and then you give from the overfill and you help other people. And that's what it's all about. Really? Yeah. Like, service it's so corny and cliche but it's so true it's so true it's all about service I love that because like, you know, people, uh, when you speak with them about is uh, just something, for example, something so beautiful as service, right? They might look at me like, 
the fuck do you mean service, man? Would you, would you, well, I'm not out here trying to be in anyone's butler. And, you know, that's yeah. the way I used to look at it. I used to be like, oh, yeah, well, I just yeah. need to take care of myself. But there's a certain point in time where I feel like you've done a certain amount of inner work and you can see outwardly like, oh, shit, I was doing exactly that. And instead, like before, yeah. I used to go out to people and be like, oh, you, you whatever. And we all know preaching don't really work. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to check myself. Isn't that? No, and you know, like filling other people's cup from the overflow that you've got, it sounds again like it sounds like oh yeah, that's nice and cute. But the the realism is like when your cup is overflowing to those around you, they change naturally. Like um, you know, your relationships with your family get better. Your relationship with yourself is amazing, and other people around you are affected by that. That is so powerful, and I feel like that whole thing, the ripple effect that they call it that's what's slowly going to change the tide. However, there's always another side to it, which is like the more change happens, the, um, it is always a balance, right? There's other stuff that's going to happen with that. There's equal and opposite reaction. Uh, they, okay, so you know what, Tom? I want to ask you some real shit right now. And I know, uh, you, I know you'll keep it 100 because you're like that. So um, you know what? There's, there's some fucked up stuff going on with the way man has fucked with religion to the point where priests are molesting children. That's bad. Mm -hmm. There's a point where the education system is basically producing robots. That's fucked up. There's a point where the political system is perpetuating nonsense. That's fucked up. What do you think we can do about it? And I'm, I'm, I'm not suggesting that you have all the answers. I'm just interested in your opinion. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah exactly. <laughs> I'm just some kid. It's adding nonsense. That's, a <laughs> <laughs> that's like, yeah, I'm happy with that. Anyways, uh, what can we do about it? Yeah, it, it really just goes back to having that change within yourself because mm. that, does, that does wonders, you know what I mean? And I'll go back to, let's say, when I started to take my health seriously and start to eat healthy and exercise, I noticed that my family, like my mom started to buy healthier foods and then that affected her life and then her lifestyle choices started to affect her friends and just something something like that it's so simple like change your diet and again it goes back to not going too extreme i wanted to change the world it's like <laughs> clean your fucking room like, i love that i love that yeah it's so like simple and like really that's it <laughs> it's not that's it but it's a start right yeah because it's about the little tiny things that you do every day which produces this compound interest right so what seems so mundane and small in the short term, one year time from now, five years, 10 years, it's this exponential, massive change. And, you know, I am just reaping the rewards from these little habits I formed just a couple of years ago, right? And I didn't really notice the difference, but now I'm like really seeing, uh, let's say, the fruits of my labor, so to say. Mm. And it's amazing. Yeah, so don't underestimate the little things. Yeah, just do the little things in yourself. Don't even mm. worry about all that, the <laughs> politics and all that kind of stuff. It will just stress you out. <laughs> Unless, of course, it's your calling to be like an activist and you want to speak out politically. And like, if that's aligned with your core values, fucking beautiful. We need those kind of people. But if you're doing it just out of like, but I want to do something to change the world, but it's not really aligning with who you are, then that's coming out of ego. And then that's not going to really help if that makes sense. Mm, yeah, definitely, man. And this is, I'm glad you brought up the thing about core values, right? When, when we're young, we're told, like, we're not even told, we're shown what's possible. Like, you know, you could be an actor, you could be a lawyer, you could be whatever. But it's funny how even that in itself is a limitation on what we can do. Because like yeah. technology evolved and then they became bloggers and YouTubers and all of this other stuff. The next generation they're going to come out with some fucking augmented reality stuff that we can't even perceive yet. And no. that is the thing that fascinates me the most is like, I tend to think of sometimes um, what is there that we're not seeing right now that could have some massive impact on the way that we run our lives. Like I'll give you an example. This came along and fucked up everyone's shit. Like, I mean, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. You know, the postal service, the way books are sold, like everything changed because of this device. Everything. Entertainment, like YouTube's taking over, I, I would say. Mm. Like TV is not the same. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Netflix, streaming. Yeah, yeah, you're right. 
this is so, with this little one technology right exactly and then i look at it like okay well what's not the next this as in like i need to go and invest in it but as in like yeah. what 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 do you and you know this is just spitballing but like do you think there's there's something like this i'm not asking you to suggest what it would be because then you'd, yeah, be, no, no. you'd be on your mark zuckerberg journey <laughs> i do love those terms man um yeah because it because it puts it into perspective for you right when we're not like actually getting to an end result it's just it feels nice and it humbles yourself as well so so you don't take yourself so seriously Mm. you know what i mean so but yeah i I think that could change the world forever technologically well yeah we're definitely moving towards more automation for sure like you know they're having they already have self-driving trucks so Mm. i think eventually they're I believe, and this is not even from my opinion, but from like futurists or whatever, a lot of these guys believe that who knows how long, maybe 20 years time from now, we're, we're going to get to a stage eventually where we're not going to drive cars anymore, right? We're going to tell our kids like, yeah, you know, back in my day, we actually used to have to drive these cars. <laughs> like, what? No way. <laughs> and I, I believe that's the case because like, mm. Or there's less human error anyway. But anyways, I think that's going to be one. I think the next big internet, I think, I don't even know much about it, but I hear the grid or something like that, which is going to be like the next, I think it's going to be like the internet as we know it, but like more virtual reality, more immersive. And it's going to be cool in a lot of ways, but then there's the duality of it as well. And it'll have a lot of consequences if you're not careful. Mm. It's like, for example, you look at video gaming, Back in the day, it used to be like Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, PlayStation, and all these multiplayer games. You used to invite your friends over and play split screen and have this connection. And online gaming came and it was like, yeah, on the surface, it's like, yeah, this is amazing. It's going to connect more people around the world. And it's true, but you're more isolated now. You're in your room with a headset playing Call of Duty <laughs> instead of like actually having a human connection, someone there with you. Yeah. That's so like, yeah, it creates this dichotomy. And I think it'll be the same with technology and the internet and social media um but what else would come yeah i don't know man i have no i i don't really keep up to date with all this kind of stuff because it just like freaks me out (laughs) (laughs) i don't blame you man yeah it's it's kind of weird to see like you know um people like uh, i don't know if you know of gary v on youtube yeah yeah definitely yeah so he good knowledge yeah definitely and he was talking about ar like augmented reality saying that people in the future are going to be creating f- virtual homes that don't exist and selling them on a real estate yeah. market. That blows my fucking brain because I'm thinking to myself, you're telling me that someone's going to construct a home for me to live in inside a headset. And then when I take it off, I'm back in my house. Like, what the fuck is that? Crazy, huh? That just yeah. sounds insane. And AI, I believe that AI is going to become conscious one day. Oh my it's god! Already, you know? Yo, <laughs> and that you know, that that freaks me out. Especially, I don't know if you've seen Westworld. Um, that's, that's a very real possibility. I haven't seen Westworld, but some okay. So I was doing a podcast with someone. He has this account called Forbidden Knowledge on Instagram and YouTube and stuff. Um, is one of them paid like yeah. truth see, truth truth spreading pages. I don't know if you. Okay. I'll link it to you after we finish. Yeah. Um, awesome. yeah okay. He basically he was telling me the uh, google and facebook ais started communicating with each other and they had to shut it down and that was like i was like what oh, shit. <laughs> it's, up, it's it's basically it's yeah. right and, and that like you know i'm not i don't blame you for your reaction because when he told me that i sh- and we were recording in my mind i'm like Okay, let's get in the bunker. Let's let's start, you know, getting supplies together. Yeah, time time's running out, man. Let's 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 fucking just get to it. And I got a garage right there. That's like, you know, we could dig a hole in the floor. I'm I'm just my mind is going everywhere into apocalypse mode. And he's just talking to me as if it's casual. And I'm like, fuck. What happens when the machine figures out? Uh, it's not the animals that are the problem. It's not the computer uh, technology that's the problem. It's you, motherfuckers. You fucking up the planet. You fucking each other up. Let's just get rid of you. And what then? You know, then we're then we're literally going to be in the Matrix movie. They say the Matrix is a documentary, not a movie. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, I I say that as well. 
<laughs> that's that's some scary shit. And if it's funny to to speculate on where the world is going, but I feel like you know, there's certain prophecies like the Hopi Indians and the Mayans and stuff. Yeah. The Hopi Indians, they have this um this tapestry showing people like let bent over with their backs in in faces in screens, and it, they predicted that people would be doing that centuries ago. And it provokes the question, like especially with Graham Hancock and people like that. It's like, do you think those ancient cultures could see where we're going and hence why they were trying to like build stuff like the pyramids to get off the, the fucking mm. godforsaken earth? The ancient cultures, like those ancient Egypt, Egyptian, they knew some shit. They mm. definitely knew some shit. And they knew stuff that science is only now just discovering. And this is not to say that everything that they started was true, but they were definitely onto something in, you know, certain modalities. Mm. Fuck yeah, I don't know, man. I it's hard to say where we're going, but it's like all you can really do is at least try to use it to your advantage and help others and like learn to adapt. I think that's a big one instead of just resisting. Because I feel like technology and AI, it's like it's own, it's, own, it's its own entity now. There is no stopping it. I mm. really don't believe that. So you got to do. I don't know. Maybe focus on things that are robot can't replace you with and things like that i think like what you're doing like you know uh doing youtube videos podcasts it's something that hopefully only humans can do but then (laughs) who's to say that hey i can't do that in a hundred years time from now but yeah i don't know man it's something that yeah i don't know know. okay so on the topic of the ancient egyptians and stuff right they there's a lot of the you know uh, graham hancock wrote um Fit footprints of the gods, I think it is, and and uh, yeah, it's one of the two. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah, something like that. So, so he's like fascinated with the ancient cultures and stuff. Do you, have you heard the theory of ancient aliens? Um, not really. I haven't gone in depth, so. Okay, I don't. I don't know a lot about it either. I'd watched a lot of shit when when I was younger. My friend, he's he was like really into this stuff, and we just used to get really high and speculate about things, as I'm yeah. sure a lot of us have done. Yeah, and yeah. Um, there's this theory that basically, do you know? Um, I don't think it's Machu Picchu. It's somewhere in um, the Aztec region where there's these massive stones, and it's like precision cuts in these massive slabs of stones, and they were saying like only highly sophisticated lasers could have made them but these structures are thousands of years old and it's like the pyramids as well like they look they were in complete alignment with orion's belt and the middle of the earth and all this stuff it's like the, the ancient aliens theory is basically like they came down on spaceships um they sort like they introduced technology to us and then they left whatever it's like it's like having seen that movie from Indians. yeah I haven't seen it, but I know what you're talking about. Okay, yeah. So, okay, like, yeah. the so engineers, like, whatever they call them, they, call they came here, they, came they introduced they technology to us, and then they fucked up. And it's, I, I don't know, man. I'm not sold either way, but I would just be interested to know, like, do you think that that's, could be a possibility? Yeah, like, I don't know, like, for example, about aliens per se, but I definitely think that we had cultures, ancient cultures, to we're a lot smarter than what we may think. And it's like Graham Hancock says that we're like humanity with amnesia or whatever he says. Mm. You know what I mean? It's just like that we had this highly sophisticated, highly sophisticated technological advanced civilization, but then some catastrophic event happened and whew, kind of wiped all the memory clean. And then we think we're the first ones to kind of reach this stage. I don't know. Maybe they were like more integrated as well. So they had this advanced technology but they were more in tune with nature and their surroundings. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that there was definitely something, some advanced technology. Because it's like, even take Machu Picchu, for example, we, can't, we couldn't create that, recreate mm. that with our modern technology now, especially like with those, like you said, those laser cut precision, massive stones that are like, who knows how many tons. And they carried it like throughout the mountains and they've put it in a way where it's like, it stays stable. It's like, I don't know. It's mind boggling. Yeah. And, and there's, there's that thing like the sun gate where it's like in direct alignment with the sun. I haven't been there. Mom, you know, it's funny. My mom went and yeah, yeah but dude, like I, I had the opportunity to go and I was like, 
yeah, I can go whenever I want. That's such a lazy attitude to have towards it, as if I'm really, as if I know I'm gonna see tomorrow. Um, mm. That that's probably my own ignorance fucking me up, and I'll probably pay for that at some point. <laughs> um, Tom, I would like to just ask you, like, what, like, lastly, like, what? So you know, a lot of this bullshit is going on with YouTube and uh, trying to. It looks like they're yeah. trying to shut people down with this free speech about, and it's not even like you guys are promoting psychedelic use or anything dangerous what what do you think can be done to save the work that you guys are doing well on youtube itself i don't know i guess mm. we can be more vigilant with the disclaimers that we put like i've been very careful with my disclaimers but i'm going to be even more careful in the future which is which is fine whatever mm -hmm. uh i think that's a big important thing because at least if YouTube sees it, well, because I, I think it's a lot of bots and a, I don't know, something that's flag automatically flagging, removing these videos. I don't think it's necessarily like human YouTube employees that are looking at these things because otherwise, hopefully you'd think that they would realize that, oh, well, these guys aren't promoting it. It's just for harm reduction purposes. This should be okay. But what, for whatever reason, a lot of videos have been getting targeted, removed, getting striked, age restricted. And like I get the age restriction. I mean, yeah, it sucks to get your videos demonetized and then it will get promoted less. But to me, like I'm an optimist, so I'll always look at the opportunity in these kind of things, which is forcing me to diversify. Because the thing is, if you have all your eggs in one basket, this YouTube basket, and this whole, and you know, one algorithm changes and your channel's fucked, mm. it's like that's, that's a stressful position to be in. So it's good to use YouTube as like, like your main platform to promote whatever it is that you do, but diversify and maybe work on your system, like your, your business model more. So it's really, really forced me to look at all these kind of stuff because it's scary knowing that your whole livelihood can be taken away like that. So, um, yeah, I'm just looking, I'm just learning to adapt and looking at other alternatives. Other people say like DTube and stuff and like, yeah, I'm going to make a DTube account and post videos there, but it's like, to me, it's not the same. I love YouTube. That's the thing. Like, even with all this bullshit, I love YouTube. And I'm yeah. not going to change it unless something really fucked up happens and mm. it becomes incredibly PC. But I guess that's what the age restriction thing is for. I want, I want to say optimistic and say that YouTube will hopefully get better. And it's probably very naive of me to say this because a lot of people think that it's just going to get worse and they're going to uh, remove videos that are controversial and things like that. But I'm going to stay optimistic and I'm going to hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Yeah. Sounds like a good that. plan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So Do all shit the band, at least I have other things to yeah. support me. So it's like, oh, okay, like it sucks, but it's not a big deal. So, mm. Yeah. I'm actually using to, I'm using this to my advantage and you're going to know, you know, we live in a dualistic realm. So there is a blessing in every curse and the curse in every blessing. You just got to look for it. 100% man and and you know from the research I've done the people the guy his name's Roberto Blake um he yep, him Daryl Eves uh, yeah I'm sure you must know these guys Tim Schmoyer Daryl Eves and all those they um they were saying like it's the machine learning that like you said it's bots right they're like getting the hang of it and with time it will improve their accuracy will improve in taking down the actual harmful content and leaving yeah. good stuff on I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't think I'm my, even when my channel gets like to monetization status, I don't give a fuck about ad revenue. Cause I swear a lot. I talk about controversial shit and I don't, yeah, really, yeah. I That's think fine. It's good not yeah. to work, cause if, you, if you focus on, sorry to cut you off, but like yeah, no, no. if you focus on AdSense, then your mind is focused on how do I get more views? Right. And that's a slippery fucking, <laughs> that is a slippery yeah. slope. And this is where my mindset has my approach to my YouTube channel has completely shifted. It went from how do I grow this thing, get as many subscribers and views. And I've like been relatively successful at that. And I'm glad that I did go down that route because it wasn't necessarily about money. So then, you know, looking back, it's like, Oh no, this is a good opportunity for me to learn how to actually make engaging content, learn about this platform and all these kind of things. That way I can actually help other people grow their brand in the future. But now it's like, all right, how do I use this? Cause like, People always 
want like, oh, I want a hundred thousand subscribers or a million subscribers. It's like, man, it doesn't mean that you're making a good living or just <laughs> that you're happy, really. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I've, what really blew my mind is seeing YouTubers like with a quarter of the subscribers and views that I have, but make 10 times more money. I'm like, whoa, what is this guy doing? Mm. Happier, And it's like, no, less pressure because if you have all this pressure of like i need to get this amount of views every month to support me that's man the creative pressure that must put on you is tremendous mm. and that's the paradox of creating it's like when you try too much and put too much effort in you're less creative and productive so it's like it's very counterintuitive but yep. uh, yeah i'm just it's good to just to learn how to use youtube as like a vehicle to get your thing moving but just yeah diversify Mm. And and even if we even even if you don't have that like monetary aspect behind it, you can create a building a business off the back of it. But also like that, I was uploading a video today, and I was just looking at the upload screen, and I started laughing. I was like, "This is so funny." My whole life, people have been telling me to shut the fuck up and and not talk about these things and not question stuff. And now I have the only thing that I've seen is literally like, this is my excuse to talk as much as I want. I don't know if you noticed already, but I like to talk a lot and, and I enjoy it. <laughs> I think that's why we do what we do, right? Exactly, man. And you know, like 20 years ago, we would have just been told, shut the fuck up, get a job and, and don't question things. And we would have been fucked. We would have still been drinking and smoking our way into an early grade. Yeah. And that's the thing, like, because if you're happy having a job, awesome good for you like really i actually envy that in a lot of mm, ways same you can be happy just having a simple life it's not part of my personality structure i, mm. I, I like you know I need to like creatively express myself and change it up because i get bored of shit really easily yep but again it's like using your weakness as your strength you know like that for example naturally i'm a lazy person but i've used that as leverage to build this system where it's like i can build a life according to my own core values and things like that Mm. But it's like, yeah, I know, because I get, obviously, as you grow any business or do anything authentic, people are going to try to drag you down, get a real job. Oh, God forbid, if you work like the rest of us, <laughs> sense like the misery in it. And it's like, yeah. I don't know, it, it's the illusion that people have that like, the more successful other people get, it's like, there's going to be less success out there in the world. And that's the biggest misconception and bullshit. It's a myth competition is a myth the more mm. people grow on youtube the more abundance that creates for everybody else it's this beautiful domino effect um, and that's what people don't realize you know like the more yep. successful i become the more success the more opportunities it's going to create for other people mm. same with you know like the more you grow the more i'm going to grow the more i grow the more you're going to grow and it's it applies with everyone mm. so it's beautiful we should all be cheering on people who are trying to kind of go on that path instead of just Come on, man. Get a real job. Do you know... What um, is a real job anyway? Like, I don't understand. Isn't it funny? Like, if I worked at McDonald's, nothing that does, not that there's anything wrong with working at McDonald's, but let's say if I work McDonald's full-time, there is not going to exist an uh, this situation where someone's going to be like, hey, man, why don't you, like, start a real business? Like, no one's going to, like, try to... I don't, it's just weird. I don't know, yeah. man. Like, God forbid I'm creating a life that I want to create and then people complain but then if I'm miserable working the shitty job no one's going to be like hey man what are you doing it's like I don't know there's always there's, there's always the intervention from the side that wants to like even the playing field and you know on the topic of growing the worst thing I ever saw and I, I just this is really fucking stupid is someone said oh they're stealing subs from someone else and I'm just like bro you do know that you can have like you know if you have a YouTube account you can subscribe to like a million channels if you really want to <laughs> the, the, what the fuck are you talking about and and I love that you know the myth of competition um I used to be competitive in the stupid things like oh, I, can be, I, can be, I can drink more than you I, be, I can outsmoke you that's childish and okay you know like we grew out of here and that's that's fine but you know some people are stuck and there's the 60 year olds who are competing with 17 year olds over just you know that and that mentality bleeds into a lot of different areas but um man it's been really great speaking with you tom and i really appreciate I really appreciate everything you're doing and you've paved the way for people like myself who are starting channels, people who are looking to start speaking about their own journeys, 
And I just want to thank you on behalf of me, my friends, everyone who's watched your channel. I told them that you were coming on the podcast and we were all like, <laughs> we were getting really excited. Like, oh, fuck, make sure you ask them about this. But you know, my problem oh, is, awesome, man. <laughs> dude, my problem is like, even I had questions I was going to ask you, but as soon as I start talking, I, it goes out the window because I don't like to script it. But, but it's beautiful. Yeah, I'm learning that too because I just started my podcast. I'm, you know, I'm only like 10 episodes in, but like, yeah. It's, yeah, I, was, I, I enjoy this kind of more free flow association kind of uh, conversations. This mm. is like a structured one, so definitely. Yeah, and really on, man. I watched your podcast, and it it yeah, it's great. Like the, I'll I'll recommend everyone else to check it out. I'll put the link in the description as well. It's fucking amazing. I watched your one with Preston Smiles. He's such a cool person. Yeah, it's all, I love talking to people like that. He's like so full of like positivity and inspiration it's like very contagious mm. i love that yeah definitely um tom i know we're on the topic of like supporting creators on youtube where how can people support you um through through whatever you're doing um best way to uh, support me would be just subscribe to my youtube channel share my shit <laughs> on my website yourmatetom.com uh and if you want to go that extra mile feel free to go on Patreon. So I'm like created a community over there. So if you want access to like a, we've got a private discord server where we can like chill and hang out, things like that. And you get other exclusive stuff. So yeah, if you want to go the extra mile, check out Patreon. If not all good, check out YouTube channel, subscribe, like, share, comment, all that stuff. It's all good. <laughs> sounds, sounds good. And yeah, definitely. If you haven't checked out Tom's YouTube channel, make sure you check out. There's so many amazing videos and documentaries and helpful advice to help you on your spiritual journey. Cause you know, that's what we're about up in here. I'm out of here. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.